Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Dr. Aida Faziza binti Mak Fazil So today I would like to share with all of you chapter 29 on nuclear physics and nuclear radiation Okay class, for chapter 29 uh, We're going to learn on 3.3 .3 topic Nuclear physics and nuclear radiation So under this topic, there, there are two subtopics 3.3.1, the constituent and structure of nuclei and also 3.3.2, radioactivity and the decay processes. So uh, this fall under subchapter 29.1 and 29.3 and 29.4. Okay, students, here are the lesson outcomes. So you should be able to master all these 10 lesson outcomes after you have finished these topics. Okay, so then let's go to the first subtopic, 3.3.1, the constituent and structure of nucleus. So, nucleus contain positively charged protons and neutral neutrons. Nucleus are characterized by the number of protons and neutrons they contain. So, let's take a look at a uh, table. So, numbers that characterize a nucleus, there are three. Z, N, A. What is Z? Atomic number is number of proton in nucleus. What about N? N is the neutron number. When neutron, number of neutrons in nucleus and A is the mass number. So, what is mass number? The number of nucleons in nucleus. So, it actually fall in this formula of A equals to Z plus N, meaning that mass number equals to atomic number plus neutron number. Okay, the notation for a particular nucleus of element X is written as element X on top is A and bottom is Z. So, example here we have two carbon and aluminium. So, carbon 14, 6. So, 14 is your A and 6 is Z. Same goes for aluminium, 27 is A and 13 is Z. So, here you have a table of mass and charge of particles in the atom. So, there are three particles here, proton, neutron and electron. And you have a mass for proton, neutron and electron. We can see that uh, electron is very light. 10 negative 31 compared to proton and negative 27. So actually electron is lighter by 1836 times compared to proton. And next one we have MEV, mega electron volt over C square. C is the speed of light. So um, another type of mass, another one is U, is the uh, atomic mass unit. We will discuss later in the next slide. So you can see that electron is only 0.00548 compared to proton. Okay, and then for charge, proton is a positive charge, whereby electron is a negative charge, neutron uncharged. Okay, the atomic mass unit U is defined so that the mass of carbon 12 6 is exactly 12 U. So uh, we use atomic mass unit because kg is a very large unit so we make it smaller by using this atomic mass unit so this mass may also be written in terms of mev over c square it comes from e equals to mc square so you get 1u equals to 931.5 mev over c square and then the careful measurement to relate the size of this nucleus to its atomic number is R equals 1.2 times 10 negative 15 meter, A 1 over 3. So by contrast, the radius R of an atom is on the order of 10 negative 10 meter. So this means that the density of nucleus is actually extremely high. If the nucleus contains only positive charges, then why does it fly apart when you have a mutual repulsion? There is another force acting called what, what, what we call a strong nuclear force, which keeps it together. So the properties of this strong nuclear force are the strong force is a short range. Acting only to distances of a couple of fermions, the strong force is attractive and acts with nearly equal strength between the proton and proton, or proton and neutron, or neutron and neutrons. Okay, since the strong nuclear force is short range, atom with more proton must have proportionally more neutrons in order to remain stable. So bear in mind that the strong nuclear force does not act on electrons. 
All right, so a uh, stable nuclei here in this diagram of neutron number N versus proton number Z, the stable nuclei with proton numbers less than 104 are indicated by small red dots. Okay, you can see the red dots there. Notice that large nuclei have significantly more neutrons N than protons. So the inset here shows unstable nuclei and um, their decay modes for proton numbers between 65 and uh, 80. Unstable nucleus can either decay into a stable nucleus or it can return back to the ground state. So various emission that results are known as radioactivity. So for alpha particles, which consists of two neutrons and two protons, whereby electron and positron are called uh, beta rays. Okay, Positron have the same mass as electron, but they are positively charged. Whereby for gamma rays, which are high energy photons. For penetrating abilities, alpha rays can barely penetrate a sheet of paper, whereby for beta rays, both uh, electron or positron can penetrate a few millimeters of aluminium, whereby for gamma rays, it can penetrate several centimeters of lead. So here we have the diagram for you to have a clear view of the uh, penetrating abilities. Okay, for alpha decay, when a nucleus decay by emitting an alpha particle, it loses two proton and two neutron. So example here, you have uranium-238-92. So the element is X-238-92 and then uh, minus 4 for A and Z minus 2. You get Y. What is X and Y? X what we call as parent nucleus and Y is the daughter nucleus. Okay. Okay, for this first example, determine the daughter nucleus and also determine the energy release when uranium-238-92 undergoes alpha decay. So you have uh, referred to the diagram given. So 146 minus 2, 144, 92 minus 2 equals to 90. Then N plus Z, 144 plus 90, you get 234. 234, you refer to appendix in your textbook or any reference book, you will get 23490 is thorium. Okay, so thorium is a daughter nucleus. Then you have to find or determine the energy release for your name 238. Then you have to find E equals to delta M C square. You have to find delta M. To find delta M, you have to find M initial and M final. M initial, this value of uranium, you can get from appendix 238.050786U. For final, you have daughter plus helium. Okay, 234.043596U plus 4.02603U. Then the sum will give you 238.046199U. And then find the difference, final minus initial, you get negative 0.004587U. Then using E equals to delta MC square, you substitute the value of delta M. Uh, calculated and then uh, substitute C with 91.5 MeV over C square divided by 1U times C square. You cancel off the C square, you cancel off the U, you will get the unit to be MeV. So the, the values is 4.273 MeV. For beta decay, a nucleus that decay via beta decay emits an electron and a positron. So you have element X and then you have the daughter Y. So you uh, lost E negative. So you get Z plus 1. For positron, element X and then you get the daughter nucleus Y. So Z minus 1 plus positron. There is a third particle emitted here which has no electric charge and very little considered as no masses called the neutrino. So N10 you get proton 11 plus negative E negative or electron plus neutrino. So here is the second example same like the first one so you can read through and try on your own. Okay. So you have another example here for sulfur and plumbum or lead. Okay. Okay, lastly for gamma decay, a gamma rays is emitted when an excited nucleus returns to its ground state. So nuclei may become excited through alpha or beta decay. So like this one, you have carbon 14, decay to N47. Okay, you have the asterisk here. So indicates the excited nucleus. So 
it, it is not stable yet. So you have one uh, it plus electron plus neutrino and then because it is in excited nucleus, it will uh, decay to become a stable nucleus. So the decay processor will keep continue until it reaches the stable nucleus. So on the left side here, you have the diagram for radioactive decay series of example uranium-235. So when uranium-235-92 decays, it actually passes through a number of intermediate nuclei before reaching the stable end of the series. What are the stable end? Uh, PB2207. So note that some intermediary nuclei, it can decay in only one way. Or whereas you have two decay possibilities. Okay, activity. Some nuclei decay more rapidly compared to others. The rate of decay, the number of decay per second, the rate mean divided by time, is called the activity. There are two units of activity. First one is Curie and another one is Becquerel. So Curie is and Becquerel is actually come from uh, a scientist's name. Okay, uh, one Curie or one C, capital CI, equals to 3.7 times 10 power of 10 decays per second. For one Becquerel, one B, capital B, Q, equals to one decay divided by S. So this Curie, usually we use millicurie and microcurie are most commonly used to calculate activity. So for half-life and radioactive dating, there are three uh, subtopics that you have to master. Define and determine the half-life of radioactive nucleus, exponential decay, decay constant, and half-life. Last one is the carbon dating. Okay, for half-life, it has been discovered that radioactive decay can be used to date numerous items of interest from the recent one or in the past. So when this nuclear decay, as it is a random process on average, give you a given fraction of the original number of nuclei. This is the number of nuclei N remaining at time T is given by this expression N equals to N naught E negative lambda T. N naught means the number of nuclei present at time equals to zero initial. So uh, alpha is decay constant. Okay, on the left side here, you have a graph of N over N naught versus time in second. So the larger the decay constant, the more rapidly the population of a group of nuclei decreases. You can find it at the bottom there. The value of alpha doubles as we move downward from one curve to another. Here below you have the example for half-life for iron-59 is used in medicine to diagnose blood circulation disorder. The half-life of iron-59 is 44.5 days. How much of a 2mg sample will remain after 133.5 days? So given that, list out all the parameters, okay? Half-life, 44.5 days. Um, 2.00 mg is the original amount. And then 133.5 days is the total time. So you need to find the number of half-life. Then you need to find the amount remaining. So let's do the first one. So first half, uh, half-life equals to total time divided by half-life. So 133.5 days. Okay, total time divide by half life forty four point five days. So you divide you you will get three half life. So three half life means three time it become half. So two point zero 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 mg become half one. Okay, the first one. Then one become another half zero point five mg. That is the second one, second half life. Then third one zero point five divide by two. 0 0.250 mg, the third one. Okay, so that is the amount remaining. Okay, for carbon dating, carbon 14 is an unstable isotope with half life of 5730 years. However, carbon 14 present in any closed system will decay away after a few half lives. So the ratio actually of carbon 14 to carbon 12 in Earth atmosphere and living organism is 1.2 times 10 negative 12. They are the same, okay? When the organism dies, this carbon-14 activity actually will decrease exponentially with a half-life of uh, 5730 years. 
Okay, so you can see in the diagram here, activity is constant during life because organism takes up carbon-14 continuously. Then this organism dies, its uptake of carbon-14 stops. Then we reduce exponentially. After death, the carbon-14 in the organism decays. So the half-life after death, okay, it keep, uh, become degrading or decreases. Okay, so here are the summary for these topics. Okay, continuation from the summary part from previous chapter uh, slides. Okay, last slide for the summary. Okay, thank you for lending me your ears. All the best. Assalamualaikum. Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, uh, I will explain back uh, uh, the one that we um, from yes from last week's. Okay, the our topics from last week's. Okay, so let me share the slide first. Okay, uh, last week, uh, okay, we stop here at the both model of the hydrogen atom. So let's look. Uh, so what is the both model of the hydrogen atom? Okay, so the learning outcome is uh, the student should be able to okay, explain the both postulate for hydrogen atom, both postulate of the hydrogen atom, uh, relate the energy level obtained from the both models to the Rydberg equation, remember, what is our Rydberg equations, and uh, calculate the radius of orbits in the Both model, and lastly, to calculate the hydrogen energy level. level. Okay, so this is the learning outcome for uh, this slide. Okay, so this should be the Both model of the hydrogen atom, uh, with the assumption or the postulates of the Both model, which means, uh, number one is the electrons orbit about nucleus, in a circular under influence of the coulombs to nucleus. Okay, remember, okay, the electron, okay, if you look at the uh, elements here, we have electron and it's orbiting. So this should be the electron. Right? The green color is the electron where the, the blue color is the new nucleus. Okay, then this is the electron. The electron we orbiting the nucleus under the influence of the coulomb. Okay, remember what is coulomb? Okay, the interaction between charge. Okay, so that's how the electron and the nucleus. The nucleus is where we get a proton. Okay, or the positive charge, and the electron is the negative charge. And with the influence of the Coulomb attraction, so we will get the electron to orbit the nucleus. So you should know this is the Bohr model. Okay, before this, we learn about Dalton and we learn about Rutherford. Okay, so this is how uh, they uh, explain about the Bohr model of hydrogen atom. What is hydrogen atom? Meaning that the atom of hydrogen containing the electron that orbiting the nucleus. Okay, so another assumption of the Bohr model is the number two, that only certain orbits are allowed where the angular momentum in the nth or low orbit is equivalent to L equals to NH over 2 pi, NH over 2 pi. 
Okay, this is the angular momentum. L is L, L is considered to be angular momentum. Remember, our momentum is P equals to mv, but for the uh, angular momentum, we will have I equals uh, L equals to I omega. Well, we, we have L equals to angular momentum and we uh, try to, uh, after uh, doing some um, um, uh, modifications to the to the uh, to the uh, equations, then we have a number of n, meaning that the orbit of number n, okay, times with the Planck constant h over two pi. So that will be the or the angular momentum of the ends allow orbit. So only certain orbits are allowed, not all orbit. So that is considered to be both model. And number three, okay, the electrons in allow orbits do not radiate. Okay, and the electrons in the allow orbits do not radiate. Okay, do not give the the, the energy. The radiation is emitted when an electron ch change from one orbit to another with the frequency given by relation relation e equals to h so what does it mean so electron is allowed uh, in the allow orbit so let's say uh, we get from here okay which will have a electron in the allow orbit allow orbit means that the electron uh, will be allowed to to be to move inside that orbit but that will not radiate Okay, but the radiation comes when what? When electron is actually change the from one orbit to another. So if the electron is intended to change the orbit, uh, let's say from this orbit and going to this orbit, then the radiation will come. So if the electron just move inside the orbit, the allow orbit, so it will not radiate. But the, uh, the radiation comes when the electron change from one orbit to another. Well, but when the use of the, the energy of HF, which means H is a plane constant times with the frequency. And number four, the electrons can change orbit by, okay, number one through the release of energy and the absorb the energy. So this is a uh, four assumptions of the both model, okay. Number one, we have electron orbit with the nucleus in the circular orbit under the influence of Coulomb. Number two, only certain orbits are allowed where the angular momentum in the n allow orbit. Number three, the electron is in allow orbit do not radiate. Radiation is emitted when electron change from one orbit to another. And the four, number four, the electrons can change orbit by releasing the energy or absorbing the energy. Okay, so another part of uh, the Bohr model is you have, you can calculate the radius and velocity of the electron. Okay, you can calculate the radius and also the velocity of the electron in the Bohr model. Remember what is Bohr model? So you have nucleus yeah, in the middle and have been orbiting by the, by the electron. Electron will orbit. Okay, in order for an electron to move in the circle of radius r and speed v, the electrostatic force must provide a required centripetal force. So this should be our centripetal force. Okay, where the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the centripetal force is actually m v square over r equivalent to k e e over r square, and then we can um transfer this thing to to that side r so r can be um, uh, cancel out with only one r on the right side and then therefore we will get mv square equal to k e square over r remember this is between electron and electron so this is a considered to be equation number one and from the angular momentum for the electron in orbital so n h over 2 pi should this should be the equation number two okay and then the angular momentum for an, for object moving in circular motion is also equals to remember uh, uh, i already told you that l the angular momentum is equivalent to moment of inertia i over a uh, times with the angular velocity or angular frequency that is also equivalent to m r square okay this is i and the omega is 
Okay, remember, uh, V equals to R omega and omega equals to V over R. So that's how they, they get angular momentum equals to MRV. Okay, M is the mass, R is the radius, while V is the speed. And substituting uh, the equation number three into equation number two, so we will substitute that where is R, so we will get MRV equivalent to NH over two pi. Uh, and then we will transfer, eh? we only have one V, which is V equivalent to NH over two pi M. Uh, okay, we bring this, th this thing to the, uh, to the bottom parts. Okay, and then from this part, okay, the substitution, uh, substitute the equation number four, okay, equation number four into equation number two. So you will get R, okay, you can find what is R from this side, okay, because we know the M times V, okay, what will be? So M times V square, so this should be square and equivalent to K E square over R. And then with the simply, uh, simple, um, algebraic uh, uh, operations so you will get radius of the uh, electron in the both model equivalent to h square over 4 pi square m k e square okay remember times by n square remember h is the Planck's constant 4 pi square m is the mass of the electron k is the uh for 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 while e is the magnitude of the electron okay magnitude of the electron times with the number of orbit okay number n is the number of orbit starting from n equals to 1 2 3 until infinity and then from r we can get v Okay, from R, we can get V. We can replace it with V. Yeah, remember, here is V. Okay, so you can get V by using this kind of equations. Okay, don't worry about the equations. You don't have to memorize because uh, we can find it in the this. Uh, okay, so this uh, another uh, the uh, uh, the continue the continuations of the radius and the also velocity. So this is the radius. Right, h square over four pi m k e square n square, and what is the value for this thing? Okay, the value of this thing is four. Okay, well, by default is five point two nine. Okay, five point two nine times ten power of negative eleven meter. Okay, how can they confirm it? Because they have already calculated it here. Okay, because h is considered to be constant value, four pi is constant value. Okay. Uh, M is the mass of the electron is also constant value, constant, and lastly, E is also constant value. So that's why they can, they put this one inside the bracket because they already know this value will be 5.29 times 10 power of negative 11 meters. Okay. And just you need to know which uh, orbit that you have to find in the both model. Okay. All right. So uh, for V, Okay, for V, then uh, they also calculated here that 2 pi K E square over H. Okay, remember V uh, is uh, quite simple. 2 pi K E square over H. Okay, over H. So, should I just put it here over 1 over N, where N is 1, 2, 3, and so on. And what is the value here? The value here is 2.18 times 10 power of 6. Okay, times with the 1 over n. Alright, so that should be the velocity of the electron in the Bohr model. So in the Bohr model we have, we need to find what is the radius of the electron. Okay, radius means what? Here, let's say if this is a Bohr model again, this is the Bohr model, that's, this is nucleus. So we need to know which, uh, this is the radius. And the velocity is when these things move. So, so that's why it involves the centripetal force. Okay. Uh, this is the energy of electron in the Bohr model. Okay. The energy of the electron. So before this, we learn about radius and we learn about velocity. 
So another part is we need to learn about energy. So it's all been should be uh, should be um, related to each other. Where the energy of an electron in a ball's orbit is the sum of its kinetic and potential energies. Okay, remember. Okay, when you talk about energy, okay, okay, we learn we have learned the energy part in our first semester. Energy comes from okay PE plus Ke, okay, the simple one. Energy is come from potential energy plus kinetic energy. After some algebraic manipulation and substituting known values of constant, we will find that. Okay, this one. Okay, okay, we know the energy. Uh, let's say mg. Uh, we have mgh. Maybe we have half kx square. Depends on the situation. Okay, and the kinetic energy where well, we have half mv squared. So after our consideration about this, then we will get, okay, the energy of an electron. Remember, this is not the normal thing. This is not a car. This is not a ball. In fact, this is the energy of an electron, okay, whereby, you know, the mass of the electron is uh, 9.11 times 10 power of negative 31 kilogram. Okay, it's quite, it's very, very small with compared to the normal mass of a car, for example, right? So you need to uh, uh, at least uh, uh, get something here. We are now trying to calculate the energy of an electron inside the ball orbit, okay? Using the concepts of energy in the sense that we know uh, the energy is based on kinetic and also potential energies, okay? And then we can simplify after the algebraic uh, manipulation, we simplify and say that the energy for the orbital, okay, based on the orbit, okay, is based on this equation, E, N, which is negative 13.6 electron volt. Remember, this is electron volt times with Z square over N square, where Z is what? Okay? Now, now you can find that the number of Z will depends on the here, okay? Will depends on the uh, calculations of finding the hydrogen is based on the mass number, okay? Mass number of many the number of proton inside the uh, uh, inside the uh, inside the element, okay? Number of protons. So when we talk about hydrogen atom, the Z will be equivalent to one, okay? And then, of course, uh, at each orbital, which orbital, so it will be determined by the number of n. But the idea is 13.6 electron volts is the constant value of uh, when we do uh, calculations of algebraic manipulations between kinetic and potential energy. So they calculated earlier, uh, so to you, so you need to use that equation in order to calculate the energy. So, the energy of an electron in an orb, uh, above orbit uh, where, whereby n is the orbital number is negative 30.6 1 over n square, especially for the hydrogen. Okay. So, the change in energy electron in the both model. So, so there is some, uh, if we can say that if there are uh, energy, okay, uh, if there are electron uh, transferring from one orbiting to another orbit, so we can say that energy can be released or absorbed when an electron change from one orbit to another, okay? So there are some energy release or energy absorbed when electron change. So how can we know? All right. So to calculate the change in energy uh, of the electron in the both model, so you can use the these equations, which means the delta E is equivalent to negative 13.6 electron volts. It's, it comes from this equation. Eh? Remember, okay, EI is what? EI is negative 13.6 okay, times 1 over N square. So another is negative 13.6, 1 over n square. Okay, this one is for initial, this one is for final. And when this is combined between these two, so you will only get the delta E that equivalent to negative 13.6, 
times with the 1 over n x square minus 1 over n i square. Whereby uh, the, the value will be based on these things, okay? Which means the positive delta E is called absorption, meaning that the energy gain, okay? The energy increase. So meaning that the energy will be absorbed. But for the negative delta E, if you get negative delta E, so that means the, the energy cess. Okay. And then this is another subtopics, okay, for 28.6 where the atomic radiations. Okay, so in this uh, uh, in this topic, we will learn about X-ray. Okay, at the end of student uh, at the end of the session, the student should be able to define what is X-ray, state the X-ray properties and the applications. Okay, so this is X-ray. Okay, at least you need to know what is X-ray because X-ray is the very important application, very important um, uh, uh, knowledge in for you because you already encounter okay when you come to asasi so or when you come to any uh maybe from your uh, secondary school okay you you do the some a medical checkup so they will ask you to do an x-ray okay so what is x-ray x-ray are a form of electromagnetic radiations similar to visible light okay but unlike light Okay, however, X-ray have higher energy. This is very good term. Higher energy and can pass through most objects, including the body. Okay, so, so that's how we use uh, X-ray. <laughs> to look at what uh, inside our uh, skin, for example, inside our body. Okay, to look at the a certain range of uh, visible. Okay, so we know that our visible range is based on visible light range is formed. 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers, eh? uh, about eh? 400 nanometers to, uh, to the 700 nanometers. Okay, so when we have X-ray, so uh, the X-ray is more, uh, will have a higher energy compared to light. A normal light okay and can pass through most objects including the body obviously when we use x-ray that energy comes from the atomic uh, atom inside the inside the uh, what we look uh, what we have in x-ray well will pass through most object pass through melepasi, most object medical x-ray are used to generate images of tissues and structures inside the body so they are meant to be in a medical terms because uh, we want to generate images of tissue and structure remember tissue and structure right because we want to see a tissue structure the structure such as bone for example okay so x-ray wavelength are shorter okay wavelength shorter wavelength shorter Okay, so you know when wavelength shorter, the frequency will be increased. Okay, this is the 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 the, the good partner of wavelength and frequency because wavelength and frequency should be uh uh, uh inversely okay, inverse to each other. Okay, then those so X-ray wavelength are shorter than those of UV rays and typically longer than gamma rays. Okay, gamma is the shortest one compared to X-ray and the normal light because gamma is quite harmful. Huh? It, uh, it, not harmful, meaning uh, if you do it, uh, do it in a good way, then gamma is very, very powerful uh, rays which have a shortest wavelength, okay, with compared to UV and also X-ray. Okay, so gamma is more shortest and the shortest one, okay. Not more, but it's the shortest one compared to X-ray and also UV rays. All right. So that's how you uh, they did the X-ray using the tungsten anode. This is anode arm where the electron beam. See, so this is the cathode. And from here, remember, okay, uh, the cathode arm will release an atom and the atom will hit the tungsten anode. And this anode, okay, okay will project the electron and that's how they they get the electron 
okay, that accelerated in the way they want to to be. So the properties of X-ray are given below. They have shared shorter wavelength. Okay, requires high voltage, high voltage, a shorter wavelength. Used to capture human skeleton defects. Uh, if you want to see maybe the broken bones, uh, maybe some uh, uh, what's inside the our lung. For example, you can see a very dark or very bright in the lung. Okay, so that's how they because uh, when X-ray is well specifically for tissues, tissues and structures. They travel in a straight line. Okay, they travel the straight line. So that's why uh, when we want to do an X-ray, okay, our doctor or our uh, medical team uh, will ask us to to stay put. Okay, to stay put duduk diam. Okay, uh, against the uh, against the uh, the wall, the 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 fabricated wall. All right. So when they want to project the atoms, okay, so that uh, we will have we will look at we will see a very a clear image of our tissues and structure so they are capable of traveling in the vacuum okay no problem in the vacuum okay how do x-ray works uh, okay so this you can read on your own okay how do the x-ray works but much like a camera okay the x-ray film develops depending on the areas which were exposed to the x-ray. White areas show the denser tissue. Uh, white areas show the denser tissue. And, okay, when you look at your structures, okay, your, your bone, your skin, and your uh, flesh or whatsoever, okay, so uh, the lighter one, okay, that is quite called as a denser tissues, okay, meaning that uh, we can, uh, but if you look at the bone structure, so it's quite, it's a, it's a darker compared to our skin or, or the other parts of our bodies, okay? So, uh, which absorb uh, such um, white areas show the density, such as bones, which have absorbed the X-ray, whereas black areas on X-ray represent areas where the X-ray have passed through soft tissue, okay? So, absorb and pass through. So absorb means you know, so you, they are finding some things. So the, if they are encounter the bones, so the it will appear to be uh, uh, because of that part will add, have denser, denser tissues. Okay, and for the black area, okay, represent areas where they actually have passed through soft tissue. So uh, at the black area, we can say that there is a soft tissues there. So uh, the at the electron will pass through easy. Okay, so this should be the summaries, right? So this is what we learned uh, before this, the early models, the J. Thompson, Rutherford, and now we learn about uh, we are uh, we we also learn about the Rydberg equation. This is the Rydberg equation. So the calculation comes from this part, okay? The Rydberg equations, and also the and today we learn about both model okay the both model uh, by the use by the uh, with the four postulates and the, how you can find uh, how you want to what is you want to find in the both model okay you want to find r and you want to find v and maybe e okay so this is r this is v and this is e r v e okay inside the both model and of course the applications in the atomic radiation is X-ray. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you have any questions so far?